been saying it. They know I'm the champ too. My title is Mr. Olympia. Theirs isn't. And they're trying to get there. They've got to fight me all day. He is a two-time Mr. Olympia, Phil the Gift Heath, in the new bodybuilding docudrama titled Generation Iron. It's a remake of the 1977 film Pumping Iron, which made Arnold Schwarzenegger a household name. Generation Iron opens in theaters this Friday. Joining us this morning, Phil Heath and the film's director and writer, Vlad Uden. Welcome, fellas. Good to see you this Thanks morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, what's really funny is Frank wants to know <laughs> how to get big and strong like you, Phil. Uh, but is this as popular maybe as it was when this film came out more than three decades ago? You know, it started a craze with people pumping iron and going to the gym. Is it still a craze? I'd say so. Stay in age? I mean, oh, yeah. the, the industry is bigger than ever. Yeah. Mr. Olympia contest is, you know, much wider viewed, you know, around the world. Whereas before, you know, they'd have a contest and you'd have to wait for the results, you know, for a few days mm -hmm. after it was already completed. So, I mean, obviously with the internet and uh, the various sponsorships available and stuff, I mean, the athletes can actually live a pretty decent lifestyle. You know, the athletes are getting paid more, uh, being able to travel. And yeah, stuff sponsorships. Like I mean, you know, you can travel all around the world. I usually travel just under 200,000 miles a year promoting wow. the sport of health yeah. and fitness. So it's pretty pretty awesome. How has the sport changed? I mean, it, it seems to me that you guys know a lot more about the science of the body and, and all of that versus back in the 60s or 70s. Right. I, I would say, you know, just like with any sport, I mean, players evolve. Um, we, we start seeing basketball players, you know, actually having bigger muscles, and they start going from not weight training at all to weight training, and you start seeing guys with cuts, you know, that you never saw yeah, before. Yeah. And actually guys... Well, if I took off my jacket and shirt, you'd... Oh, yeah, you would embarrass me totally, obvious, man. Right. Like, yeah. We already had this talk. We, do we already had this talk earlier. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it begs the question as we look at some of that footage, and, and I'll be honest, I don't, I mean, it, with no disrespect, if I were to look at you, wouldn't some people say, well, he, he's great, he's tough, he's roided up as well? Well, I mean, it's if it was easy, everybody would be good. You know, as simple as that. There's no, there's no substitute for, for hard work and dedication and talent, you know. I think bodybuilders in general are always being put in the category, in that category, just because of their physiques, you know yeah. what I mean? Where, where if we talk about it, that subject should be a subject of all sports, professional sports all over the world, you know what I mean? And then we talk about it in the film a lot, how they're being categorized, and we talk about all the subjects in, in, in a very open manner, basically. And, and, and to Sam's point, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger has admitted that, look, I used to take performance-enhancing drugs, steroids, whatever you call it. He doesn't regret it. Is that still happening today? Do I need to take something to look like you, or is it all just discipline and hard work? I, I, I would say no, because it's a really a personal choice. And just like any other sport, you know, people choose to do what they want to do to win. But, but, but in some sports, it's very much like, this is not kosher, this is illegal. In your sport, is it okay or not okay, or what's the general feeling? Well, we're actually being, I mean... Just like most other sports, you know, there's random testing and stuff. So, I mean, yeah. that does exist. And in addition to the sponsorships that you have, I mean, it says it right there in the contract, you know, and yeah. just like most other sports. You know, yeah. you get caught doing this, I mean, you can lose everything. So, I mean, essentially what we try to portray and what I try to preach is that, you know, I got into bodybuilding shortly after playing Division One basketball just to look good and feel a little bit better each day. And collectively, over the last 11 years, I was able to put on a lot of muscle. But, I mean, you know, anyone can look me up and see that, you know, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, when I was in college, I just had a, you know, very good ability to, to gain muscle. I was that guy in the gym that, you know, right. people would say, wow, like, he looks at the weights and he, and he gets bigger. Um, and, and then when I obviously learned how to eat better, when I stopped partying in college and, yeah. you know, eating the pizzas and the drinking and all that stuff, and I started focusing more on how does these different food items work. You know, when you go in the health food store, millions of people to this day have so many myths and fallacies that they follow, and yeah. they don't know how to, yeah. you know, really get lean. And what we try to talk about is we know how to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time, which re would help really the world, really. I mean, our perspective would eliminate a lot of fad diets. It's more of a lifestyle. Yeah, and uh, totally I think, we, yeah, we, we're able to do that quite well. There's well. certain people or body types that, you know, you can work hard and do the whole regimen and eating right, and yeah, you'll get some muscle in that, but it's just not going to happen kind of thing. It's for, I mean, it would be no different than, you know, like for me. I, I was playing Division One basketball. I mean, it didn't mean I was going to go to the NBA. I just wasn't tall enough. I wasn't good enough. Uh, but it didn't mean that I couldn't get a Division One scholarship. So what I'm saying is, is that just because you may not become Mr. Olympia, it doesn't mean that you can't be better than you were the previous day, the previous month, previous year.
And you could, it could be a three-peat for you. That's Absolutely. your Olympia. Yes, that's right. When is that? Uh, next Friday and Saturday oh, in Las Vegas. Oh, man. You sign for it, though. Um, you see this smile? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to get it on. Confident. Yeah. A Los Angeles premiere and red carpet for Generation Iron tonight at Chinese Six Theaters in Hollywood. Uh, the documentary opens in theaters this Friday. Phil and Vlad, thank you guys for coming in this morning. Thanks, Thanks, for, Thanks for having us. Is there someone you watch out for over your back, or is there just anybody can come in and uh, take it away? I mean, you always look in your rearview mirror, and you keep them there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. Well All said, right. Phil. Like Excellent. That.